All right, guys, before we turn this, uh, this pump back for the core, there's a critical core charge on this thing, so we got it from the back. We're going to do some vacuum testing. As we see here, we'll, we, the pump is still dirty. I got to clean it up. And uh, we're going to do some vacuum testing with this uh, vacuum test manifold from Sonex. And uh, the first thing we need to do before we use these things, we're going to calibrate it. We have a calibra uh, calibrating orifice on this side. And uh, this is the output for the test, which is this hose. Uh, we're going to calibrate it on the 30 thousandths inch orifice at negative 5. And... Uh, positive five on this side. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this in here. Calibrate our manifold and we turn our pump on. As you can see here, I'm already on, on positive five. I mean on negative five. So my 30 thousandths of an inch calibration is good. And to calibrate this other side, you plug the hole and you calibrate it to, to negative 25 or vacuum 25 as we see here we turn the knob so we are 25 and 5 uh, inches in mercury or vacuum 25 and 5 we want to be uh, in this uh, calibration this 30 thousandths orifice, it would it, it mimics uh, 30 thousandths of an inch of valve bore wear. Usually a good valve, uh, valve bore will be like above 15 inches of vacuum. 25 will be, uh, would be perfect vacuum. If we cover this, 25 would be perfect, like no leaks at all. On some boards, you're going to see close to 25 and on some 25. Now, uh, there's not a lot of information on the Sonics. Uh, website to do this there's information on the pressure regulator valve and there's information on this uh, it, uh, the one that we changed the spring for a uh, torque converter clutch uh, converter limit valve I think it is uh, I need to go get my manual so I can get so I can tell you exactly what valves are, are those all right well now that we are calibrated what we need to do now is uh, take all the valves of the pump of the pump cover and uh, we're gonna clean this up set the valves here on the on the shop towel and uh, after we're cleaned up then we're gonna do our vacuum testing so let's put this to the side and what we're gonna do now there's uh, three locations to test the pressure regulator valve and as you remember on, I think it was part one, when we took this apart, the pressure regulator valve was real stuck. Now, uh, the three positions that we're going to check, we're not going to be able to uh, vacuum test the, you know, where the, where the boost uh, uh, signal is at. Because we, we took the little check ball and the spring on the pressure relief. And another thing that I forgot to mention is that... The, the, the guy that did this transmission, the pump was already worn out, so he replaced it with the replacement pump, which is this. But this is an earlier model. Uh, this is an 03 to 04, and the transmission, I forgot to show you that the solenoid body was an 07. And uh, outside of the case, it had a, a RF8, I believe. So it was a 2007 or 2008 model and the pump that was bought or purchased for that unit was the 05 and up so now it has the correct pump in it uh and this is an earlier pump but anyways uh we're, let's go ahead and start taking these apart oops there we go so we have the return a retainer for our pressure regulator and this one here actually since since this is a 03 to 04 I didn't mean, I think I mentioned it on the on the uh, on the description of the video on part two. Uh, I ended up taking the spring off of the. Of the uh, I have to leave. I had to uh, leave the original spring back. All the springs that came on on that pump, I reused them again. And the only thing that I used was the pressure relief bushing. This just right here. This is all I use. 
So this is the spring that I had put on there before and uh, I took it back. I mean, because uh, there's two different years and we noticed that when I took this valve out and the color of the spring and we saw that the two tips were different. And as you remember, this is a steel pressure regulator valve. And the reason uh, uh, Transgo uses those is because normally the bore might not be too wore out, uh, but uh, the valve will be scratched. So they supply, they supply you with a, with a new valve just in case your valve is worn out. I think this is the pressure limit uh, or anti-drain back. But anyways, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the, the book and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go through it this time. And I, I mentioned that on, uh, on the valve body or on the solenoid body that I was gonna use the, the book and I totally forgot, but I will get another I do have another uh, solenoid body that I'm going to use and we're going to try to vacuum test the, the manual valve on that other one and as I remember correctly that's all scratched up. I got to look for it. Just remove these. This one, the thermostatic valve is right here in the pump. This is the cooler bypass valve. There are some differences between the early models and the late models. So we have to be careful on this. And it's, it's, there is a way to interchange the pump. I got to look in one of my uh, ATRA seminar manuals. Uh, they mention how to, uh, they show how to do it. I just don't like to do stuff like that, you know. I'd rather just... Uh, you know, get the right one and just install the right one on there. And uh, that'll stop all the hassle. I mean, if you're turning a lot of transmissions per week, then you don't want to be spending time, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. I'm going to get my bench buddies and my drill. And we're going to clean the boards. We're going to prep this. I'm not going to show that on video. But bench buddies, you guys know that I've showed them before. I've used them a lot on some other videos so you can you know go back to those videos and uh, check them out uh, we're gonna go to the Sonex website and we're gonna see uh, where are we going to uh, try to I know that this location I did it before and so I've, I've done it on a few of them uh, to check this location here which is the one that has a different uh, land which is the tip for the uh, transgo that has two different springs one yellow and one blue uh, all right, well, let me clean this up. I'm gonna put you guys on pause. I'm gonna come back with this cleaned up. The valves don't look that bad, but we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, kind of rinse them off a little bit and blow dry them and we'll start vacuum testing. All right guys, so I'm at, I'm at the Sonics website and uh, I'm looking at what they have for, for, the pump, for the pump itself. We have a converter pressure limit valve uh, which is the one I showed you this one they have a uh, TCC control valve plunger which is this one oversized pressure regulator valve kit which is this one that comes with the spring and it comes with the uh, with this with the bushing this is the one that came on that on that other new pump or remanufactured pump they have the OE size manual valve and the oversized uh, manual valve and the pressure switch O-ring end plug kit. Uh, the later models only take one dummy plug and uh, I'm not sure if I showed it to you guys but it was already on there. It comes with the uh, with, uh, O-ring and uh, Transco does supply that on the, on the kit. All right, so let's look at the... Uh, pressure regulator valve oversized pressure regulator valve let's go and look at what it looks like at the instructions okay let's look at the instructions and here we're gonna see that 
it's on PDF it's on PDF and uh, there's a lot of glare yeah there's, there's some glare it's on PDF but on the bottom side it actually shows on the second page where to uh, let me see if I can zoom in on this what ports do we need to try to center it more maybe zoom in some more so we're gonna we're gonna vacuum test right here and we're gonna vacuum test right here we want to see 18 inches in vacuum and we want to see uh, 16 inches in vacuum over here and over here we need to put some putty uh, like clay or something plain dough or something and then we have uh, all, we gotta have 18 inches in vacuum there as well so that's one that's one thing we're gonna do so we're going to we're going to vacuum test the tip of the valve we're gonna cover this hole in the rear see it's got a hole that goes through here we're gonna cover this hole and we we're going to vacuum the tip of the valve that's one and then we're going to vacuum here and the last vacuum testing place is right here uh, that actually checks to see how worn this thing is but we're not going to do that because we don't have one that has a cover on it we have the one that has the hole in it because I already used it on the on the pump itself all right, I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and put all the valves back in here. So I already have all the valves out. I already have this thing cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and put the valves back in. And, uh, and we go from there. All right, before, we, before I do that, I already put the pressure regulator valve back in the bore in here. And for those of you, I would recommend you get the uh, uh, manual. Uh, and I was I was kind of right on what, what the valves were. Okay, so this the, you have the pressure regulator valve, and then we have the con converter anti drain back valve, which is the second one that goes in here, that one. And then the 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 next one is the converter pressure limit valve, the one that has two sizes on the on that land right there, and it takes two different types of springs. And then we have the uh, this one here is the anti-drain back valve I believe let me see right here number 10 cooler bypass valve this is the anti-drain back cooler bypass valve which has the thermostatic uh, element right here you heat that up and the little thing protrudes out that's this is our torque converter clutch line, valve lineup uh, and they call it clutch control valve and in the converter clutch uh, regulator let's see number two converter clutch control valve sleeve all right so now that we have all those valves identified correctly this time uh let's go ahead and i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together and then we start with the uh, uh with the vacuum testing all right guys uh, we are ready for vacuum testing we're gonna need a pencil uh eraser or a pencil with an eraser and let's go ahead and vacuum test the the tip of the pressure regulator valve and see where we are actually we're gonna test two areas here we're gonna test the tip of the pressure regulator valve which which which, which, which we're gonna test the land on the tip which is in, on this bore right here and I see that we have another land right here and all we have it's a little uh, control orifice which we can plug that with our pencil eraser and we we actually would check this bore right here uh, we're gonna check vacuum test this area right here and that'll test this bore this part of the bore and this part of the bore this bore this land this uh, channel connects to this uh, other valve right here next door and we cannot we cannot test this because I mean we have a hole in the back to have a good connection or, or a good seal we're gonna put I know the new vacuum test lines comes with like a rubber pad this one doesn't have that uh, so 
We're going to seal it with uh, some green assembly lube, which is thicker than the blue. Put some around it. And let's see what... Uh, see, this is... Even though Sonics doesn't have uh, a lot of... Uh, they don't have anything for the 5R110W. You know, on the... You go, they have like a... Like, uh, like you will my, probably call them cheat cheats or whatever. They tell you exactly where to, uh, where to uh, vacuum test. But they don't have it for this unit for some reason. I don't know. This is big enough. Yeah, this is big enough for this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my vacuum pump on. And as we see our gauge, I'm not sure if you can see it from there. Actually, I just moved. I just moved uh, this knob right here. Let, let me calibrate it again. When I grabbed it and turned it over, I turned that knob. Let's see what we got. Yeah. It ain't that much, but it'll lie to us, so we we need to... Okay, we're at 25. I'm going to try not to touch that again. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing off. got to press down on that, and it'll, it'll let it go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste this right here. Make sure that I am on that bore nice and tight. And with my finger, I am going to cover the hole in the rear. Let's see. I want to go ahead and turn it over. Actually, I can just put my pencil eraser right there. And the bore is worn out. We have 10 inches of vacuum. It actually holds pretty good my pencil here, my pencil eraser. But I am not sure if I am sealing correctly or all the way. Now it's reading less. So we have 10 on that bore. Picks up pretty good. It's a very large area. Let me go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to do this again, put some more assembly lube all the way around, and retry it again. If not, I'm going to go ahead and change, let, let me just go ahead and change it from one side to the other, because we are on the edge right here, I can actually put it on this other port right here. We have an o-ring on it, you just got to make sure that it's nice and tight. Now my hands are a little bit slippery. There we go. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and center it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. Center it on the board. On that board. Get my pencil. Same reading. Ten inches of vacuum. Uh, we need to see. 18 that's what uh, well not not this board not this land but the other land we need to see 18 all right let's go ahead and shut this thing off that was a perfect seal as you can see here that little piece of uh plastic is coming off now let's go ahead and seal the other one which they they want 18 inches of vacuum This is the transgo valve. Uh, I'm going to use the other, the other end. Now, just to make sure that everything's okay, uh, we're going to turn it on, and we want to we want to see 25 again. We want to make sure that we still have 25. I'm going to put this a little bit closer, right there. You see the gauge move? That's 25. So we are good on there. And I need to be on the circuit being tested. Nothing. 
I don't have anything. Maybe what? Two, four, one, two, three, four, one and a half. And it is working. As you can see, I was on the circuit. Let's try this again, one more time. Press on it, one and a half. So this, this pump is, is just shot. I'm inside the circuit. I'm actually a little bit to the side, but I am inside that circuit. Let's go ahead and uh, vacuum test this land right here. The reason pressure regulator valves they wear out like this is because they they oscillate on and off constantly and they try to control pressure at all times. So that's why you're going to see them wear out like this. All right, so we're going to I can see that the valve is sealing this land and that land. Let's go ahead and uh, turn our pump on one more time. Or let's let's put this and seat it on the circuit that we want to test press on it and then this actually has six seven and a half seven and a half so this is probably going to be the most worn uh valve in this in this pump right here now we have the anti-drain bag valve I don't see any opening on the bottom. So we're gonna we're gonna vacuum test this port right here. Vacuum test this port right here. And actually we can vacuum test this whole section. But no, it's probably not gonna work because I'm going to be on top of this of uh, this land right here and it's going to create a seal and it's going to seal perfectly on this side but we can actually test the this side of the valve you know if we vacuum it test this side right here even though we plug that but let's see if it's if we can be capable of doing that with this is centered if this hole was on the opposite end we could have do it by doing this but as you see, we're blocking that right there. So let's test this port first. And we want to be on that circuit, so make sure you're lined up correctly. Press down on it. Oh, it moved a little bit. Well, here we go. 15. To me, that's perfect. That passes. That passes that vacuum test. Uh oh, I moved it to the side a little bit. Fifteen. Fifteen. And let's try that again. Let's try that again. So we are centered and centered. Oh. Yep, 15. So we're good on that. We're good on that circuit. All right. So now let's test this big area right here. We're going to be able to, I think we are going to be able to, we confirm that 15, that port is good. So we're checking the anti drain bag valve right now. Now we're going to check vacuum test this side of the valve, but it's all also going to test 
Let me see how far that thing is. Uh, it's probably not going to work because if we see zero, this is on the very edge. I mean, I, I barely move it a little bit and it opens up right away. So this might not be a good area to uh, vacuum test this. Let's go ahead and put it right here on the very corner of the circuit. Turn it on. We're barely on it. I mean, we have a big leak somewhere. Let's see if it oscillates, if the gauge oscillates when I move this. Yes, it does. So we can conclude probably that our pressure regulator, the whole pressure regulator valve train, it swore out. I mean, plain, just plain Jane wore out and it needs to be reamed, reamed and repair. And as you can see, we're right there on the circuit. So, all right. Now we're gonna check the tip of this valve, the one that has the two different lands. We're going to use our eraser to plug this hole right here. All right. I am going to need to be this way. The problem is, is that I don't have a flat surface here. But let's see what happens. As you can see right here at uh, where it's melted, I don't have a nicely flat surface, but we might be able to get by. All right, so go ahead and press on it. So even though we have an orifice right here, we have six inches of mercury or a vacuum which is pretty good. I mean, I'm very confident that this is going to be pretty a pretty good valve right here. Let's go ahead and plug this hole. What do you say? 16, 17, 18, almost 18 and a half. This is a good, perfect seal. Not a perfect, perfect 25 seal, but it is a good seal. And I was worried about this right here uh, that he might not uh, might have not been able to seal correctly. But we see that we have a good seal right there. All right. Now, we have the torque converter clutch valve. Now this one, we have a hole in the rear. Yes, we do have a hole in the rear, so, and we can see the spring on there. And this is open to the to exhaust. So actually, how this works, we probably need to vacuum test it with. No, there's no way to vacuum test this. If we vacuum test without without the spring, we vacuum vacuum test here in this area to see if it seals in between both of here. But this valve does not oscillate. What this valve does, this is the cooler bypass valve. So when it's cold, the transmission does not flow through the, to the cooler. And when the thermostatic valves start to extend, then it closes the circuit. And instead of just flowing, uh, flowing to a sump, which is in the rear, it goes through here and then it goes, dumps out. So this valve did not oscillate. It just moves when it warms up and it closes this passage right here. And now you have cooler flow, so we're not going to worry about testing that valve. We're going to test the tip of the torque converter clutch valve. And this valve does oscillate when the torque converter clutch comes on. The critical wear area, or is that little uh, control valve plunger in the rear? So that's available separate, you know, uh, I mean, you can replace that on all the units. Let's go ahead and seal this, but I'm going to have to go this way because I need to plug that hole. Here we are. 
So we already see that we have some sealing. Let's go ahead and plug this hole. Now look at that. 21, 22, 23. There is nothing wrong with the torque converter clutch circuit in this pump. Here, this is this is where the fluid goes in, and it starts modulating to open the uh, uh, torque converter clutch circuit. Then you have the regulator that regulates the pressure on the torque converter clutch. This is this is perfect right here. That is perfect. See, we have six with the orifice open. So there was no issues with torque converter clutch operation in this unit. But there was an issue with pressure. As we see that the whole bore is worn out. Could this, could this have been the problem of the pump uh, shattering like this? It could be possible. As you see here, the pump rotor is still here. It just split in two pieces and it just opened up. Too much pressure. Pump cavitation could have been one issue. Now if the pressure regulator valve buzzes like that, it may pick up some uh, cavitation. Uh, but we already tested the filter with a vacuum pump, you know, a hand operated vacuum pump and it hold it 15 inches of vacuum and I could already started seeing the filter collapse. Uh, so we tested that our filter was not a pro was not our problem here for that issue. The problem could be on the pressure regulator valve. The way that this thing is melted like this, uh, I mean, it could have been also a bad ground. A bad ground is very common for that problem to happen. Uh, so my recommendation would be to add an extra ground from the engine block to the battery and probably one from the transmission to the frame. You know, two extra grounds, it would not hurt anything and at least you know that you would have a good ground. Okay, I think that would be it for this video. What else do I have here to, uh, that we can I don't see any more lands. Maybe this right here. I'm not sure how far that is into the circuit. Uh, we may be able to test this land here. Between that and this. Which if this land is wore out. It will leak into this circuit. Let's check that out. Let's check that out and see what what's up with this. All right. We want to be nice and centered. It's an okay circuit. It is an okay circuit. But I see that the, the, the land is very close to the next port on the, you know, next door. So that might be why we are probably leaking just a little bit. I mean, not, not a whole lot. To me, 15, it's a pass. Below 15, it's a no-go. So we definitely know that we have a problem with our pressure regulator valve. So we have a pressure regulator valve, the first valve on the left. We have the anti-drain back valve. And then we have the uh, converter. Uh, I still have the manual right here. Let's see. I keep forgetting the name of this valve. Converter pressure limit valve. Converter pressure limit valve. This is the cooler bypass valve. Torque converter clutch uh, apply valve. And then we have the uh, torque converter clutch regulator valve and plunger, which they call it converter clutch control valve and sleeve. All right. Can we test this little valve? Uh, I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's check it out to see if we can test that. Whenever you're assembling one of these units, I want to point out something to you. This clip goes right here. If you put this clip over here, you will not have, you will have some torque converter codes. Because this is, this is actually like a boost valve 
for the torque converter clutch. So the more you go into the throttle, the more, I mean, it's going to boost the pressure going into the converter. So this clip goes right here. I just want to, you know, make sure that you know that. All right, we'll take the little clip off. And I actually did not wash this, this one here. Let me just take my little, it's stuck in there. And just clean it up a little bit, right quick. All that thought. So we probably had a little bit of junk in there. See, this is the little bushing. This is the little plunger that goes in there, little valve. How can we, we have four holes down here. You know what, we can probably test it with, it, with this thing on. I mean, I was thinking maybe putting this right here and try to cover this bottom uh, four holes. So let's go, let's put it back in the land because this is going to be a more controlled, see what I'm saying? These don't belong there, this, this belongs here. So the, what, what I had in mind, you know, to seal those four holes, just to, to check the plunger, the only thing that I'm going to be testing is that valve, which is a good thing, you know, because you want to make sure that you don't have wear in there. Uh, but now we're not only going to test that, but we're going to test the, the land area here on the bore and also the ceilings are on the circumference right here on the plug. I hope that you can hear me. The compressor just came on. So let's, let's check that. I think we're going to have a low vacuum breathing here because we have a lot of potential for leaks. As, as you can see that that plunger, it, it came right in. I mean, it went right in. So let's see. Wait for the compressor to turn off. I should have just turned it off. I'm not even using it. Okay, so we need to move. Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm going to need to move this to here. Every time you use this, Make sure you calibrate it. I'm not sure if it does come out of calibration or not, but every time I, I use it, I always double check. All right. So let's go ahead and seal this circuit. And I want some part of this exposed. So I go right here. Let's see. Let's see what happens there. What do you say? 15. And we do have a lot of potentials for leak at the, at the end of the plug and on both bores. Well, the bore on the end of the plug and on this bore and the little valve inside the little plunger. On the little sleeve, the valve, the valve that's inside the sleeve, there's another potential for leak. So we have three leaking areas that we can compensate even though we are at 14 and a half i'd say this is good this is good because we're not only checking the the valve inside the sleeve or the little plunger inside the sleeve we're checking the the bore on this side and the bore at the end of the sleeve or the plug all right, guys, so this is vacuum testing a 5R, 5R55, uh, 5R110 uh, W pump. And Ford calls this a torque shift transmission. Uh, the only valves that you have are these valves in the pump and one valve in the solenoid body, which a lot of people still call that thing valve body. 
Uh, I do have one. I got to look for it. I have a box full of valve bodies and stuff that I use. Sometimes I lose a bolt or a clip or something. I just get it from there. Uh, I'll look for it. And if I remember correctly, I'm not sure if I threw it away or not, but I was about to throw it away because that one had the manual valve worn out. And the manual valve has a forward clutch engagement or forward engagement uh, issues. The, all the gears are controlled by solenoids. You have five shift solenoids and you have the lockup solenoid and then you have the EPC solenoid. So you have seven solenoids all together, but the forward clutch is controlled by the manual valve, not by a solenoid. So if your shutter's taken off, you could have a problem there on the forward clutch circuit, or you could have a low, uh, a low, low diode that went out, which is very common, uh, or you can have some low reverse uh, clutch issues. All right, guys, well, I hope that you liked this video. Click the like and also subscribe and uh, the more of you guys I know I have a lot of viewers but not a lot of viewers subscribe the more subscribers that I get the more it helps me uh, and people that would search for information like the one I get for free if I have more subscribers I'll be more visible and whoever needs help they will find my videos easily or easier in other words so I suggest that if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe and all of your comments are welcome and i thank you for being my subscriber whoever subscribed to my channel and i love you guys comments all right thank you and till the next